Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where police officers used an excessive amount of force against a father while his helpless children watched it happen, tasing him 11 times. The officers now face a big lawsuit, with one of them being suspended and then charged with aggravated assault. Starting off on July 27, 2017, a 39-year-old man named Johnny Wheatcroft was in a car with his wife Anya Chapman, along with her two children, ages 6 and 11, plus a family friend who were parked in a Motel 6 parking lot just after dusk. Suddenly, two officers with the Glendale Police Department, namely Officer Matt Schneider and Officer Mark Lindsay, pulled up in front of their vehicle in an attempt to conduct a traffic stop for an alleged turn signal violation. Things took a terrible turn soon after that. Let's begin by watching the body cam footage. How y'all doing? You guys staying here? No, I'm just not yet. I'm about to get room. Okay. I'm about to get room. Hey, when you turn in here, man, just make sure you throw your turn signal on for us. Just, yeah, that's all it is. Nobody has their ID on them? No. Anything with your name on it? Yeah, just grab it out real quick. Nothing in the car there shouldn't be, right, anybody? No. Nothing. Why are we in the You don't have a driver's license, son? Uh, I don't. Do you have a driver's license? I have my ID. Thank you. Hang on a minute, okay? Now, here we have a family, the mother and two kids sitting in the back seat, while the father is in the passenger seat next to the family friend who's driving. The footage shows Officer Schneider walk up to the passenger side and immediately start demanding ID, not just from the driver, which would make total sense, but also from the passenger, Mr. Wheatcroft. In response to this, Mr. Wheatcroft claimed that he didn't have ID on him and sounded rather confused as to why he would need to identify himself. Firstly, note that, in Arizona, a police officer cannot typically pull someone over without due cause. The law requires police officers to have a valid reason to stop drivers, such as a violated traffic law. This prevents law enforcement from conducting stops for unfair reasons, such as personal biases. In addition, some offenses are written into the law as secondary, meaning an officer must pull a driver over for something else before issuing a ticket or making an arrest for the secondary offense. So, even though the traffic stop may have been justified, something crucial to know in this case is that the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution states that every citizen shall enjoy the right to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. While this right applies to passengers and drivers during a traffic stop, you have slightly different rights and responsibilities as a passenger. While the police have the authority to ask for the driver's identification during a traffic stop, they don't have that same authority with regard to the passenger. As a passenger in a vehicle, if the police do not have reasonable suspicion to believe that you have committed a crime, it is legal to refuse to show identification. Reasonable suspicion means that the officer must have a reasonable belief that you have committed a crime or are about to commit a crime. Judging by this, and the fact that the traffic stop had nothing to do with Mr. Wheatcroft, it's no doubt that he was rightfully confused and hesitant to identify himself. Don't, re don't reach in your bag, man. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. You said you don't have no ID. I don't want no, you no, reaching no, in there. What's your name? Uh, why are you? Why am I even at the end? Well, you don't have ID, and then we made, it, we made a. Yeah, if you're a passenger in a vehicle, yeah. you need to have. Why? Well, yeah, I, don't have, I have an ID. I don't have to give it to you. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, well, I could take you down to the station and fingerprint you because we made a traffic stop on the vehicle, brother. That's I it. Didn't. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not doing nothing. Yeah. I just. You know I mean? I'm just here trying to help Listen, you. Listen, we can do this one of two no, okay, ways. Okay, relax for a minute, please. I mean, no, I'm going mean, to relax. Okay. Listen. Listen to me. We're going to... Don't, don't have nothing. Okay, I don't want you stuffing anything down in between no, 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 the seat no, 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 like no, no, you're no, doing. No. Relax. Okay, Keep your oh, foot please. in there. Okay, stop, please. I didn't do anything wrong. Right? Here's the deal. You okay. tense up, okay. I'm going to... Okay. Listen to me. I Listen to me. I understand. Listen to me. Relax your arm, okay? Okay, Don't start... Listen. A couple of things. One, okay, you don't have no ID on you, okay? 
I'm trying to do this as easy as we can. You already okay, done stuff like something down in you your know, backpack and you stuff something down in the seat. Backpack, I promise you. Okay. I Are you gonna I fight or not? No, I'm not. Okay. But I promise you, I didn't step We're gonna do this. Okay. I just watched you. No, you didn't, sir. You. Okay. Listen. Oh, He's gonna fight, dude. No, I'm not, bro. No, you just stop. wait. I'm not hey, fighting. Relax. Okay, babe, I'm not. Don't pull away. Hey, get your I'm not, taser bro. out. I'm not, bro. I'm not. You are. I'm not. I promise you that. You got a taser on you right now. He's not. He's not. I'm not doing nothing, man. As seen in the footage, we've gone from a calm traffic stop to now an escalated situation. Officer Schneider continued asking Mr. Weecroft for ID multiple times, even going as far as to threaten to take him down to the station for fingerprints. Officer Schneider justified this by stating that it was a traffic stop and he must ID himself. We've already discussed how that's a misstatement of the law because he was a passenger in the traffic stop, not the driver. In fact, a former law enforcement officer had to say this about the ordeal so far. The controlling officer is not going to the driver's side and investigating the turn signal. He's focused on the passenger, which tells me that maybe this is not why we're here. They're not really interested in his turn signal violation. Now, this perspective makes perfect sense, especially when you see Officer Schneider yanking Mr. Wheatcroft's door open, grabbing his arm, and trying to pull him out of the car with a taser pushed against his shoulder. It's important to emphasize that Mr. Wheatcroft was not resisting arrest or posing a threat to Officer Schneider or anyone else at the scene. It's worth noting that police can order a passenger out of the car for several reasons. One, legitimate safety concerns. If the officer orders a lawfully soft passenger out of the vehicle for safety concerns, then that is a lawful request and the passenger is required to obey. If they don't, they are essentially committing a new crime of resisting without violence. Two, reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. Three, evidence of a crime is in plain view upon approaching the vehicle. Clearly, none of these circumstances apply to Mr. Wheatcroft's situation. I'm not doing nothing, bro. I'll tell you right now, you're gonna continue. Ow. Man, what the f is wrong with you? Relax. Please, I am, dude. Relax. Ow, stop, my not gonna I'm not gonna fight. Ow! Stop it! Ow! 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 Give me your hand. Okay, okay. He's not gonna do nothing. Middle of the complex, roll fire. Give me your hand. This is stupid. Give me your hand. Yeah. No. 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 We need to get watch Mark. It's hurt. I'm just sending him. So look, you hit him in the head. No, no, she didn't. She didn't mean to. I am stuck in the seatbelt. I am stuck in the I am stuck in the seatbelt, bro. Ow, ow, ow! I'm stuck. I'm stuck, bro. Ow! Hey, get in front of the car right now. Get in front of the car. Come on. You're all right. Come on. You're all right, buddy. Come on. Mark's hurt. Huh? Mark is hurt. He got hit in the head by her. We need to get her in handcuffs right now. She didn't mean to. Please don't take my hey, hey, Stop. Oh, no. No. Kick. Kick. Stop it. Get the kid out of the car. Get him to the front of the car. Walk this way. Call the door. Everybody's in here. What did I do? Who's got the taser? Take the taser out. Take the taser out. There's a probe in here. I got him. I got him. Please. Give me. Please. Give me. 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 Shut your mouth! I'm done getting around with you! We got a, there should be a backpack right in here. Just pull that out, make sure nobody touches that. 
get the probes out when he does one of those. You want to grab the probes out first so nobody gets stuck? He got, he got hit a couple times, so. Where's Mark at? Don't worry about the probes. We're good so far. Let's get him out. Get him standing up. What we've just seen is not only inhumane, but a ruthless abuse of authority displayed by all the officers at the scene. Let's not forget that it all started with a simple turn signal violation, but Officer Schneider decided to forcibly pull Mr. Weecroft out of the car, and his fellow officer tased Mr. Weecroft as he was being restrained. This was when Officer Schneider also joined in and deployed his own taser, even though Mr. Weecroft was clearly not resisting, nor refusing to comply. In fact, the footage also shows that Mr. Weecroft was tangled in his seatbelt, but still tased anyway before being thrown to the ground. As if that wasn't enough, Officer Schneider pulled Mr. Weecroft's pants down and tased him in the testicles while keeping him in a pain compliance hold. The taser was used a total of 11 times. As per the Stanford Criminal Justice Center, from what little scientific research exists, it appears that prolonged and or multiple use of a taser dramatically increased the risk of ventricular fibrillation and consequent cardiac arrest even in healthy adults. There also appear to be permanent, if not fatal, dermatological impairments associated with the use of a taser in stun mode. It goes without saying that an excessive use of force was employed. Note that excessive force is when a police officer uses more force than is reasonably necessary. Any force used not only needs to be reasonable, but it needs to be reasonable in light of the circumstances. In addition, it's good to refer to the official taser guidelines as they give a clear description of how, why, and when the device should be used. The taser device is intended to control a violent or potentially violent individual while minimizing the risk of serious injury. It is anticipated that the appropriate use of such a device will result in fewer serious injuries to officers and suspects. A verbal warning of the intended use of the taser should precede its application, unless it would otherwise endanger the safety of officers or when it is not practicable due to the circumstances. The purpose of this warning is for the following. A. Provide the individual with a reasonable opportunity to voluntarily comply. B. Provide other officers and individuals with a warning that a taser may be deployed. The application of the taser is likely to cause intense but momentary pain. As such, officers should carefully consider and balance the totality of circumstances available prior to using the taser. So, judging by this, there's no doubt whatsoever that using the taser in this situation was totally unjustified especially repeating it 11 times, including a couple to the groin. In fact, it's even mentioned that manufacturers generally recommend that reasonable efforts should be made to target lower center of mass and to avoid intentionally targeting the head, neck, chest, and groin. Lastly, bear in mind that Mr. Wheatcroft's two children were witnessing everything that was happening to their innocent father. The footage also captured them crying. Before continuing to the body cam footage, let's review what was seen from a surveillance camera at the parking lot. Once again, it's very evident that the officer's main concern was certainly not the traffic violation, but instead the passenger of the vehicle. It was reported that officers say they had reasonable suspicions due to the location's criminal history and the fact that Wheatcroft was reaching into a bag at his feet when they stopped him. Anyway, the officers continued to treat Mr. Wheatcroft as a criminal even after successfully placing him in handcuffs. The remaining body cam footage showed them slamming him into the car and yelling at him mindlessly. Yeah. Keep, shut up. No, 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 shut up. You're fine. No, 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 Listen to me. I have pneumonia. I really have chest pain. I'm having pain. Okay, well, you shouldn't have been stupid then. I wasn't trying to. Watch your, watch your hand. I have pneumonia. He's got one right there. Hey, Bill. Right here. Right here. I have pneumonia. And behind. And behind. And behind. Relax. Stop being a big baby. That's all for him. That's all for him. I'm telling you I have pneumonia. Yeah, I think that is good. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Okay, you're fine. You're talking. I'm good. I've got him. This car right there? Right. Yeah, it's fine. Ow, oh, my wrist! God damn it, man! Please! Hey, did we search him real good? 
Um, I did not. So as far as searching him, we've got another us. probe hanging. Look, looks like let's let's pull him out and search him real good. He let's let him calm down for just a sec. Yeah, and we'll. I get just him dropped out. the probes on the ground. Which, yeah, there was probes down there. Which vehicle related to him? This car right here. What do you have? Dope. No, we got everybody in custody. Mark got, got fucking hit. In, I don't know what he was what he was stuffing. Who got hit? Mark got hit in the face by her. She swung something and knocked Where's him out. Where's Mark at? I don't know. I think they. Following this, both Mr. Wheatcroft and his wife, Miss Chapman, were arrested and charged with aggravated assault on a police officer. They spent months in jail because they couldn't afford bail, leaving their kids behind. Eventually, Miss Chapman agreed to plead guilty to a lesser charge in order to get home to her children. Soon enough, the charges against Mr. Wheatcroft were dismissed by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office after prosecutors saw the body camera video. A few months later, in November 2018, Mr. Wheatcroft filed a civil lawsuit against the city of Glendale. It contends Wheatcroft and his family suffered from trauma and physical and emotional damages. This prompted an internal investigation into the incident. The Glendale Police Department suspended Officer Schneider for three days as a result. A statement made by police read, Wheatcroft exhibited verbal non-compliance by refusing to identify himself and failed to obey the officer's instructions when he reached into a backpack despite officers telling him to stop. Soon after this, in September 2021, the Arizona Attorney General's office charged Schneider, who retired from the force in 2020, with three criminal counts of aggravated assault. The Maricopa County Attorney's office previously declined to press charges against the officer. The case was reopened in 2020 after police body camera video was released in 2019. Later in March 2022, it was reported that Wheatcroft's lawsuit will now advance to the next stage, a jury trial, on claims of excessive force, civil rights violations, and infliction of emotional distress, unless the settlement is reached before then. No further updates have been made as of the date of this recording, and it appears that the lawsuit is still active. Be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.